Welcome everyone to this video. So I made a video a few days ago about the harmonic mean and it was 18 minutes long. So I'm gonna quickly make a video that's very fast, uh, basically deriving the formula. So, um, so it's not 18 minutes, quite a long video. Um, also got a new lamp from Lampat. So you sort of see the LEDs, it has to be on or else it's going to be too dark. So hopefully it's not too distracting. And lastly, um, the harmonic mean also has some use in statistics. As I said in the other video, I do not know its use in statistics. I only know its use in rates, such as 80 kilometers per hour and stuff like that, where you work out the average speed, and I'll be showing it in that case. If you're here for statistics, just a disclaimer. It might still apply, but I'm not sure. So let's just quickly start out by writing the generalized form of the formula. So it's n divided by the reciprocal, the sum of the reciprocal rates. All right, so that's the generalized form. Um, I'll just quickly be dealing with the um, when n is two. Um, once we figure out that formula, it will basically apply. And um, so it's uh, this. All right, so let's get into the intuition. So I'll just start off like I did the other time, um, going off by example, so that we drive by an example and yeah. So first, we are traveling 80 kilometers per hour, and then we are traveling 100 kilometers per hour. So we changed our speed, and we changed our speed um, after half the distance of, say, you going a trip of 200 kilometers. After half the distance, you start traveling at the other um, rate. So um, just in case you're not getting what I mean, you travel 100 kilometers, then you travel 100 kilometers, so you travel a total distance of 200 kilometers. You first travel the first half of the distance um, at 80 kilometers per hour. Then you travel the second half of the distance at 100 kilometers per hour. All right, so now we want to figure out the average speed of the trip. So what is average speed? Just a recap, average speed is distance divided by time. Now we know distance. We can just sum that up. But what is time? Well, time, if you want to get all fancy and do dimensional analysis, you can do, you can do it by units, but I'll, just, I'll also quickly show that real quick. Um, let's just quickly work it out. So we have 100 kilometers divided by 80 kilometers per hour. Now, um, if you just think about it intuitively, you'll actually see 100 kilometers divided by 80 kilometers. Obviously, if you're going slower, then the total distance per hour, it'll take you more than that per hour. So it sort of makes sense in that case. Um, using dimensional analysis, which is basically looking at the units and canceling out accordingly, or um, so that you end up with the units that you want, um, you can look at it like that as well. And it sort of actually foreshadows what comes later in the video. So if we quickly divide over here, 100 divided by 80 is 1.25. And I only know that because I calculated it earlier, but I just want to double check just to make sure I didn't mistaken the value um yeah 1.25 okay so due to the fact that there's kilometers in the numerator and then the denominator we cancel out but now we have in the denominators denominator we have r and this is what i was referring to about the foreshadowing the hour moves to the numerator now um the reason for this is we can look at it uh, in the case of an example so we have one divided by one half um in this case if you have, how many halves go into one? Well, two. So you can look at it in that case. Um, as the denominator, denominator's denominator increases, um, as you'll notice, it will go into one more and more and more, and it goes in accordingly um, by the amount. So it makes sense how it multiplies. Um, you can also look at it in terms of... Um, Actually, that, that, is, <laughs> that is what I was going to explain. Sorry, I was thinking about another concept. So you can just think about it in that case for now. Um, so we have the first, hour, um, the first amount of time. But now we look at 100 kilometers per hour. Uh, for 100 kilometers, we obviously know it's one hour. You can obviously do the whole same calculation. But now, due to the fact that we are looking at a formula, we want to reduce it to the formula. So to a formula, not to this formula necessarily, but that will happen. So let's try and reduce it. So we'll notice that we have a total distance of 200 kilometers, AKA two times 100 kilometers. 
corner that off. Now we divide this by the rates. But now it's the rates. We want to sum the total amount of time. So we want 1.25 hours plus one hour. But we're going to do the whole calculation again like this. So now we, if we evaluate just the denominator, we'll notice that we get 1.25 plus 1. So we get the total amount of time, and then over here we get the total amount of distance. Now, this basically looks pretty similar to this, but why is it not exactly that? That's the 2, that's um, 200 kilometers. So the reason for this is we can actually reduce it down. Now I showed in the other video how you can cancel out the um, distance using... Um, Manipula manipulating the fraction, but in this time, this time I'll just quickly show you according to cancelling out basically. So I'll just quickly rewrite um, 200, and I'm not going to add in the units now, it will just take too long. So 100 divided by 80 plus 100 divided by 100. Now, how can we reduce this down? Well, let's see. If we want to multiply this by x, then we'll have to multiply this by x. Now, uh, due to the fact that it's 100 over 80 plus 100 over 100, we apply it to the, both of the numerators. So it will be, um, if you cancel that out, it will be 100 over 80 x plus 100 over 100 the x. Well, we actually don't need to do that now that I think about it, because here we have an x. Now, we want to just quickly do our manipulation. So, actually, does now that I think about it. Sorry, this is fairly unscripted. Let's multiply this by 1 over 100. What is 100 multiplied by 1 over 100? Well, let's cancel the denominator and numerator, and we'll get 1. So, we have 1 over 80 when x uh, sorry, x will look like that for now, is 1 over 100, we get 1 over 80 plus 1 over 100. And obviously if that's the same there, we'll get 2 in the numerator. Sorry, this is a little bit jumbled. Um, but this is when x is 1 over 100, then we get these values. Um, now, as you'll notice, this works. Um, the reason for this is because we can multiply the numerator by an x value, but we're multiplying the denominator by that same x value. That means that the purport that means that the fraction basically stays the same. It's like saying two divided by four. If you multiply it by two, it will on both sides. If you multiply by two like this, you can get um, four divided by eight. If you reduce it down, if you reduce it completely, it'll still be one half. But as you'll notice, if you're multiplying both, you'll just be multiplying by one. It is because as you scale up the numerator, um, by the same amount that you scale up the denominator, the fraction stays the same. So we can multiply by this x value and it will still say stay the same. So after we've done this whole manipulation to get 2 divided by 1 over 80 plus 1 over 100, the fraction is still the same because we've done to the um, denominator what we've done to the numerator, aka multiply it by x. So all's good. We don't need to actually worry about it. Now, we, as you'll notice, this looks the same as this. 80 being our first rate, 100 being our second rate. It looks exactly the same. Now we can generalize it to n because, as you'll notice, 200, if we multiply, if we're still using the example of 100, then it'll be 300 multiply as you'll notice, it's still 3. And as it increases, we the um, sum, th the denominator is basically just calculating the time, as said. So you'll just be using it, um, you, you'll just be calculating the total amount of time, um, no matter how many um, different intervals you are traveling. Um, also, just a quick disclaimer, if you're going to use this formula, you need to make sure that you actually use it um, if the distances are the same, or else you have to um, change it. So if you're traveling 100 kilometers, then you're traveling another 100 kilometers, then you're traveling 126 kilometers, you can find the average speed for the first two, but then you'll have to, you cannot use this formula if you're going to use 
it if you're going to include the 126 kilometers you can adjust you can manipulate it as shown here while you derive the formula you have this as an intermediate step if you use this it still works out it's pretty ba um, basic to actually figure out why because you're just calculating the time and instead of reducing it down and you can technically actually reduce it down but instead of it being one uh, the reciprocals it will be the reciprocal um, one divided by first rate one divided by second rate and then 1.26 divided by the other rate so it will be a bit of a change up but that is basically the video i hope you enjoyed it and if you are confused because i know i did go very fast i want this video wanted the video to be shorter than the previous video if you are still unsure maybe just go watch other video or search on youtube for some other videos and hopefully that will clear things up for you but Hope you enjoyed the video and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.